Good morning, welcome back to the 120th. Today we are talking pinhole. Now I haven't done any pinhole shooting since uh, that video where I made a pinhole lens board for the Intrepid. Um, but I was recently at the Analog Spotlight event in Worcester uh, and Steve from Chroma Cameras was there and he was showing off this, his latest product. Uh, it is called a Chroma Cube 66. Uh, 120 film taking, uh, as you might guess from the name, six by six frames, uh, all 3D printed and finished off with uh, acrylic something or other. I don't quite remember what Steve said, um, but it looks really nice. I mean, it's it's lightweight. Uh, the the how it's described on the website is it's pocketable. Um, I'm not sure I have any pockets that would fit that, but. I might get it in a coat pocket maybe. From the outside, it uh, looks great. It's got these uh, view lines um, that show you where your frame is gonna be because of course, aperture is so small that you can't actually see the kind of live picture. So you have to guess or have an idea of roughly what your angle of view is. And Steve has very uh, conveniently drawn these on both on the top and on the side. Uh, to show you exactly what your field of view is going to be. This sticky outy bit here uh, is your shutter. Um, and as Steve described it, if you can see a hole in the sticky outy bit, then the, uh, the hole is open. So it's, that's, that's shutter closed. That is shutter open. If you look, there's a hole. The back is held on with magnets as well. So you just give it a tug, a good firm tug. Uh, and that comes off. And then this is what we have. Uh, and we, we lift this down, this sort of back plate, and it takes with it the base of the two um, spool holders. Uh, so the, our, our take-up spool is going to go in here, and we're going to load a roll of 120 in here. Uh, there's a handy little bubble level on the top so that you'll be able to tell when it's on your tripod whether it is perfectly level, so that is useful. So details on the lens, it, it is a tiny hole, 0.2 of a millimetre. I don't think Steve made this hole in the same way that I made my pinhole. I am guessing that Steve had some kind of more delicate and accurate means of making this. 0.2 millimeters, uh, its focal length is 30 millimeters, and the 0.2 mil hole with the 30 mil focal length gives you uh, uh, an aperture of f150. So that is what I'll be doing my calculations, my exposure calculations with. Uh, so let's load some film. We'll start with some FP4, just for consistency across my whole life. So there is no, Steve has not supplied a, um, a take up spool with this. So I will need to use uh, a, one of my, the ones I've collected from inside a film. Good news here is I have about a hundred thousand of the fucking things. So, and we're going to load it face down across the back here. Put a fair bit of tension on there to make sure it's loading nice and tight. That'll probably do. Oh, you bugger. Okay. There is absolutely no tension on any of those uh, elements, which is slightly difficult. Right then, let's slide the back on. And there is frame one. i close the window on the back and uh, we're ready to go. Right then, first stop is somewhere that I've come quite a few times on this channel already. It is St. Arolda's Church in Old Brion 7. As you can see, it's all really overgrown and looks great. It's gonna be perfect for this, I think. Uh, so to calculate exposure times, I'm gonna be using the Mr. Pinhole website again, because that worked for me last time. I'm gonna meter everything at F8. Okay, let's take a, a reading roughly on the sort of average on the side of the church there. 200th of a second, at one 250th of a second would be one second at f8. Uh, so we're probably looking at, let's, let's, we'll, we'll do one second and see how that goes. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. It's, it's a big field of view. I mean, it's, that's just shy of 90 degrees, possibly about 85 degrees, maybe 82 degrees field of view. That's huge, really. I mean, that's, that's like wider than most of your wide angle lenses. So if you look at what we're going to see here, that's going to clear the top of the, the, uh, the, the church by some way. And we're getting down here to about, we're going to get all of this in. That is a big frame. So one second, here we go. One, two. Uh, let's 
go up here. There we go. Let's, let's do this frame. Let's take those frame lines again. Yeah, something like that. Open, shut. Uh, what should we do next? What about some gravestones? What about nice and low here, right, right in the grass? Maybe I think that's what we'll do. Let's do that. And we'll expose for the grass here, I think. So up here is going to be probably overexposed. We'll get some dark areas here. Boom. One, two. Let's move again. I have to say, I kind of prefer the sliding shutter, if we can call it that, um, over what I was doing before, which was uh, like a lens cap on and off. At least you get something of a kind of tactile clunk with this one. It's not a shutter, but at least it feels like I'm taking a photograph. Actually, we get a shot of these steps. Boom, one, there. I do like this little area under the trees here. I have photographed here before, 11 seconds. So let's give it 15 with reciprocity. Now let's give it 13. Go off there. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Close. Here we go, we're in the grass. Let's turn you down a little bit. Let's go dead level, shall we? So using the bu bubble level on top to level it out. Open and closed. Okay, I mean, it's frame 12, right? It has to be a selfie, doesn't it? We get arm's length here. Mm, mm, mm. 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 That's a roll finish, that was frame 12. Um, I've got to get back, I've got a conference call. Uh, I'm supposed to be working. Shh. Right then, day two of uh, the Chroma uh, Cube 66 uh, test, review, whatever you want to call it. And I'm out in a very different setting today, as you can see. We've got FP4 loaded again. Um, I reloaded last night. Oh, shoot. So that's interesting. Um, just taking that out of the bag. That shutter was open. So frame one should be absolutely screwed. I must have nudged it um, in the bag. So something to keep an eye on. So here we are. I'll oh, come around this side to where the frame lines are. So I think this could look pretty good. This one's coming up here. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, stop. This actually has on it, if you see this ring here, this is a magnetic ring uh, with a filter thread, uh, with a thread rather, that allows you to screw in 49 mil filters which is obviously a very common size, but uh, I don't have any of them. So it's a very common size for you know, some of the smaller 35mm cameras. And uh, small 35mm cameras are not something I own. So let's go about here. One, two, that's about two and a half. Sun's not ideal at the minute, it's a bit um, very high, we're right in the middle of the day. Let's see what happens if we tuck into this little niche here. This niche. Yeah, that could be quite cool, couldn't it? All right, that's what we're doing. Here it comes. Open. One, two, three. Tell you what I do want to try, actually, is see how good this is with things that are close to it. I was fairly convinced that the pinhole board that I made for the 4x5 was really bad with things close to it. So now let's test this and see how it gets on. So somebody has, um, many years ago clearly, carved their names into this tree. Three, four, five, ah, oh, caught that on my finger. 
Let us now find out what happens if we fill the screen with this. Although I don't actually think I can fill the screen with it. So we're going super close on this. So I'm about, what, th two and a half, almost three feet away. One, two, three, four, shook. Right then, I am uh, done with the FP4. Uh, 12 shots taken, or rather 10 shots taken, because of course I screwed up two of them. So I have a roll of, uh, Pro 400H. Now the great thing about this chroma camera is that you don't need to take it off, you don't need to take the tripod base plate off to change the roll because this whole back comes off so you just pull. So we now have a 400 ISO colour film instead of the 125 um, FP4 that we were using before and that's not by mistake, um, I did think that through. The idea is I'm trying to avoid super long exposures with the with the with the color film reciprocity failure with the black and white film just results in underexposure whereas reciprocity failure with a color film results in underexposure but can also result in a color shift as well because of perhaps the different colors in, within the emulsion are more sensitive or less sensitive or, or, or more susceptible to that reciprocity failure um, i'm hoping that by using a 400 iso film I can avoid, you know, the kind of 10 and 15 second exposures. I can't remember what I used before, was it a Portra or something like that? And there was a definite kind of shift into the greens and yellows. One, two, three, four. I'll go with four. Maybe just a shot down the path here, actually. Kind of cool. I'm gonna stick with my four seconds. Three, four. I'm almost back at the car. This is quite fun. Sort of a cabin in the woods type feel to it. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, how about that then? I'm genuinely impressed with this little camera. Um, really happy with some of those images. Oodles of character, but also a lot sharper than uh, the pinhole board that I made for my 4x5. Uh, and I genuinely had a lot of fun uh, using it. A uh, couple of gripes. Number one is the uh, the lack of any kind of uh, tension on the supply spool side in here, which makes it very difficult to get a really tight fit on the uh, take-up spool before you close the camera. All right, quick update on this. I got in touch with Steve from Chroma Cameras. I dropped him an email and said, this is what I found, This is I was having this problem. Um, and he said that he'd already spotted it. Um, you know, the, the camera that I bought would have been they haven't got serial numbers, but it's basically serial number 0002. You know, he's got number one and I've got the second camera that came off the line. So he had spotted the issue uh, and has come up with his own uh, fix for it. So he said that he's added some bits around the, the film supply side uh, and he's also added a spring to the take up spool side uh, to create much more tension around that. So all fixed, all done. He also said in his email, uh, I've also made a slight change to the way the bottom pressure plates hinge uh, making them two independent parts makes it slightly easier to reload the camera and out in the field. Um, and he has also said that, despite the fact that I think my, my uh, model might be the only one out there that doesn't have these bits already in them, I'm going to stick mine in the post and he's going to retrofit those new elements to it. So uh, amazing service from Chroma Cameras, as always. Um, uh, Steve is always... Uh, responds really quickly to emails and always responds himself. Even before I met him, uh, I've emailed him about other things uh, and he's always got back to me and always, has always given me a very personal response. So The only other thing that I have any complaint over is this. Uh, so this is the window on the back and that's closed. And that is open and that is obviously how you look in to see the number on your film. On a couple of those frames, which I'll show you here, I did get a sort of streak across the middle of it. I think what's happened is I've, I've wound on with that window open in bright sunlight and I've ended up with just a very faint streak across the middle of the frame. No specific solution that I would suggest to that other than uh, wind on in shade. Turn your back to the sun, wind on with your back to the sun um, and problem should be solved. I certainly didn't get it on all frames and I wound them all on in the same way. So the only thing I can think is that it was bright sunshine behind me. Other than those two things, everything else positive about this camera. Uh, I love the, the uh, frame lines that show you where your angle of view is gonna be. These are super handy. I feel so enthusiastic about this currently um, that I am planning another shoot with it. 
Um, but what I really want to do, I want to do selfies. And it's difficult to do selfies because you need two hands to open and close the shutter, really. So the only selfie you can get is like this. So I've got a plan. Uh, pinhole selfies using flash. And I've done some calculations and I think that I can use my flash guns to generate enough power. So I'll go out to the, the, to the garage, uh, get set up, turn all the lights off, open the shutter on this, and then fire the flash, I'll get myself set up and then fire the flash and hopefully that'll create an image. That coming up, loads of other stuff coming up on the channel as well. I'm gonna be heading out to a local business and doing some photos on some 620 film uh, with some 620 cameras. Um, up here on the shelf we currently have, so this one is the 4x5 speed graphic with the Dalmire lenses freshly mounted with the Simon Forster custom printed lens boards. Uh, so I'm going to take that out, I'm going to put some sheets through that. Next one along is a 3x4 speed graphic, I've got some dry plates, I'm going to be shooting in that one, looking forward to that as well. Next one along, Pentacon 6, um, I have a plan for that, I've got to shoot, I'm going to be taking that on. Next one along is a Seagull 4A TLR, uh, which I picked up very recently in an auction, I don't know why. I just saw it and it looked interesting. They do, they do have a bad reputation, the Seagull TLRs. That one is uh, missing its um, aperture arm. So I'm gonna have to do a bit of a bodge job fix on that. Next one along is a very exciting new addition to the lineup, Bronica SQA. So I've got a couple of videos in the, uh, in the offering for that one. One of which will be a straight review of that. See how I get on with it, see what I think of it. And then head to head. SQA versus S2A. Who's gonna win? Uh, and then, yeah, that's fine. You know what that one on the end is. That is the Bronica S2A. Actually, um, this is gonna be coming up very soon. This is a custom adapted um, Maya Optic Gurlitz Trio Plan 100mm f2.8 uh, lens, which, uh, again, some Forster has created a custom adapter for to make that fit onto the Bronica S2A and that is, that's like a cult, that's got a cult following that lens. It's a bokeh monster apparently. Uh, so I've got a plan for that as well. Loads of stuff coming up, therefore you should hit that subscribe button. Otherwise you do risk missing things and I wouldn't want that to happen to you. I'm just thinking about you, okay? I'm just looking after you, looking out for what's right, you know? If you don't subscribe, you're gonna end up worse off as a person, you know? All right, that's it for today. See you next time. All right, bye.